So there's this um, common question I come across, especially in contemporary times. I heard it when I was a kid, of course, and um, it was a question that I had to tag them. I had to tackle, I had to struggle with a little bit, you know. And um, for me, it didn't, it didn't, it, it didn't remain a problem for very long. It didn't because, you see. I, I don't know at which point, to be honest, but eventually I came to understand that what God requires of me is what God requires of me. And um, I didn't need to be worrying my head about somebody else. So before I get into, before I get too distracted, let me hit this nail on the head very quickly. What's the common question? You know, what about those who are of other religions? You know, you are a Christian because you were born a Christian. And does that mean that everybody else, you know, who was not, who was not born a Christian, who has never heard the name of Jesus, does that mean that they are going to end up, end up in hell? And it's made a little challenging because the Bible literally says, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. There are a number of scriptures in the Bible, and I've not looked through them all, but I'm just going to wing it a little bit. A number of scriptures in the Bible that address this issue. But one of the most pivotal, one of the most pivotal is this. When in John chapter 21, Jesus was speaking with um, Peter and was saying, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. You know, Peter kept asking that question. And Peter, no, no. Peter was like, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then he started... You know, he was started asking about the disciple whom Jesus loved, whom, when you study scripture, well, you will understand to be John. This is John chapter 4, 21. And, um, you know, and I'll read um, from verse 20. From verse, I'll read from verse 20. So then Peter, turning about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper. John. And said, Lord, which is he that be I said, Lord, which is he that be the thing? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, What shall this man do? As in, Well, you're telling me that I should feed your lambs. What about this guy? What is this guy supposed to do? Then said Jesus unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. You see. As God's people, we make this critical mistake of pointing at other people, of complaining about what that person is doing. Of, For example, I'm a man and I'm supposed to love my wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Meaning that that's how God requires me to behave toward my wife. But you find a lot of men beginning to complain and say, but what about my wife? What if she does not behave well? Well, in a sense, that's not your business. You are obligated to wash her through the, to, to, to cleanse her through the washing of water by the word. That's what is required of you as a man. But if she does not submit herself to you, that's not your problem. Your problem is to answer to God with respect to the assignment that is given to you. And the assignment that is given to you is to present the word to her. Share with her the vision that God has given you. Run the race that God has put in your hands. If she chooses to cooperate, good for you. If she chooses not to cooperate, good for you. If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. See, these things are not life and death issues. That's usually, usually easier. But the reverse is usually, I find the, usual, the reverse is usually more challenging. When I'm talking to a woman, for example, and I'm saying the Bible literally says concerning the woman, if he obey not the word. He can, without the word, be converted by the conversation of the wife. And you find many women say, but what if he's not a loving husband? Yeah, I know, but the Bible just literally said, even if he does not do what I told him to do, he's supposed to honor you, he's supposed to uh, treat you like the weaker vessel, he treats you according to knowledge, deal with you according to knowledge, as you're supposed to love you, die for you. Bible literally says if he does not do any of that, you are still supposed to submit to him. That's tough for most people to hear. And I, I think, I, and that's not, it doesn't, it's not limited to the family. It's not limited to marriage. It, it goes all the way out. 
It goes all the way out to different spheres of life. You find that person saying, if my leader is a bad leader, I cannot follow him. That's not what the Bible says. It says, submit to those who have authority over you. Uh, if that person slaps me, why should I not slap the person back? Well, what the Bible says is turn the other cheek. I'm saying that we are so busy judging the other person, we're not checking the things that we are doing. What is required of us is to answer to God for what is given to us. Okay? If I am the steward that was given five talents, I need to be productive with my five talents. I can't be saying, but that guy who is supposed to produce with two talents is not doing anything. None of my business. Do your job. Now, with respect to this calling, with respect to this question about what about those who, you know, who, are, not, who are not born Christians, who are born into Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu homes, what happens to them? But well, there's this passage in Romans 14, 14, which says, it says, I know, watch this, I know and I am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, I wrote this notes down earlier today, I'm persuaded by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean of itself, but him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Now, I'm just going to read the notes that I wrote uh, as it was coming to me. Say, what I already know and believe to be sin, that is what is sin to me. If I do not have that knowledge and conviction, then to me, that thing is not a sin. So yes, even if my culture is a culture that kills people, to me, it is not a sin if that is the truth that I know. So even if I have never heard of Jesus, but I'm living by what I know to be truth, what I have been taught since a child to be true, that is what God is going to work with me on. Let me move forward. So naturally, there are those who would like to exploit this caveat by doing things they know to be wrong while trying to justify it through the ignorance of the pre in the presence of men through ignorance in, they may, uh, through ignorance in the presence of men does it they act like well nobody can judge me well nobody can judge you but god can basically we know what is right and what is wrong but okay let's say you do not know and you act according to it no problem god is fine said so the reason why this will not work is because it is it is not men who will judge you it is god and it does not look at your face or features it looks at your heart god is not mocked you you, you cannot bluff your way out of dishonesty with god those who honestly know something to be wrong and evil and they choose to persist in it they will be judged as evil if you know something is wrong and you do it trying to use bold face, it's not going to work with God. You can't lie your way out of this thing. This eternally solves the question and problem of folks who from other religions of folks from other religions who may never have heard of Jesus. God will judge you based on what you know. If you have never heard of Jesus, he will judge you based on your conscience. He is God. He will do we, we do not tell him how to run his creation. However, for those of us who know Jesus, we are called upon to testify, to tell him, to tell the whole world of him. This is why we are given the anointing. It is it is to empower and equip us to go out there and do damage by telling the world of Jesus. What am I trying to say? The fact that that other person is not from my religion does not stop me from doing the work that God has called me to do. What is the work that God has called me to do? God has called me to tell of Jesus Christ. That is why I have received anointing. Yes, there are a lot of other people who know of God. They have that conviction in them, but they've not heard of Jesus. Take, for example, the Ethiopian who was riding the chariot that God, that Jesus was, that um, Philip was transferred, was transported to speak to by the Holy Spirit. He was already on the path. He already had the book of Isaiah. He was studying, but God wanted to draw him closer. He wanted, he wanted him to have that kind of relationship with him. So he sent, he sent Philip to clarify the scripture to him. And Philip did. And for those of us who think that um, Christianity is a, is a white man's religion, all the way back since the first century, man, one or two years after Jesus died and ascended, died, arose and ascended, Christianity has been in Africa. How, how's that for... For, for a copium. <clears throat> so what am I saying with all this? 
Don't worry about those who are Hindu. Those, don't worry about those who are from other religions. Ask yourself, what did God tell me to do? You do what God told you to do. Live the life that God required you to live. Speak the message that he has sent you to speak. Let the world know that there is a Jesus. And those who do not hear of him before they die, God will judge them based on their own experience. Don't worry about that. Your own job is to run the race that is given to you to run. So run the race that is given to you to run. And run it well to the best of your ability. God will glorify himself. I'm going to stop here. I don't want the video to be too long. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I've not spent time in the presence of God like I, like I would love to. And so I don't feel very connected. But this was heavy on my heart as I was studying today. And I just thought maybe I should just put it out there. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Share this video. Ask a question. Leave a comment. Uh, click on like and share. And uh, subscribe. You, you, you know the works. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.